So today I will be reporting about Hans Jurgen Isenck about his biological base trait theory. So let me just give you a brief overview about this theory. So Isenck developed a factor theory much like McRae and Costa, but instead of having five dimensions of personality, he only derived um, with three, namely extroversion, introversion, neuroticism, and stability, psychoticism, and superego. Also, um, in this theory, individual differences in people are mostly biological and not merely psychological aspects of personality. He also believes that genetic differences lead to structural differences in the central, in the central nervous system. Um, so the evidence needed for the biological basis of personality comes from many different sources, including this one, um, temperament, behavioral genetics, and brain imaging techniques. So let's go first with temperament. So temperament is biologically based tendency to behave in particular ways from very early in life. So um, if you're like an easy to warm up children, or if you're a slow to warm up children, or a difficult to warm up children, and all that. It actually affects you as well as your behavioral genetics or the scientific study of the role of heredity in a person's behavior so um, I think actually believe that our personality is most likely to be inherited to uh, um, with our parents so under the behavioral genetics is hereditability or the extent to which a characteristic is influenced by genetic um, it actually makes use of twin adoption studies and gene environment studies so the twin adoption um, study is most likely to be a hereditary influence on twins both identical and fraternal who were raised apart and who were raised together so they're actually studying um, how twins work um, when they were brought up together and when they were brought up separately Next is the gene environment and it aims to assess how genetic differences interact with, with our environment to produce certain behavior in some people but not in others. So um, in our dev psych, it actually was explained that your environment and your genes actually is being, um, it's like the switch that if it wasn't honed growing up, it's going to be turned off um, that kind of talent that you have if it is not honed um, once that you grow up and okay so for the last one also to determine the biological basis of personality um, I think use the brain imaging techniques um, specifically the electroencephalography and the functional MRI so electroencephalography is to record electrical activity of the brain. It is superior to other brain imaging techniques to show when brain activity occurs, but not specifically where. So to know where it occurs, that's when functional MRI comes into picture because it tells us um, what is working in our brain because it, ta it is tracking blood oxygen use in the brain tissue available. Next, we shall be talking about the biography of Hans J. Isenck, the proponent of the biologically based trait theory. Right, so let's go to um, the biography of Hans J. Isenck. So, his mother was Ruth Werner. It's, she's a German silent film star, so this was the time when silent films were on rise. And his father was Anton Edward Isenck, or a singer and actor. So technically, he grew up in this theatrical or parang super um, talented family. So, but it did not work out with his parents. So, nung nag-divorce yung parents niya, he lived with his lola, sa side ng nanay niya, in which he grew up with little parental dis discipline and few strict controls over his behavior. So, parang... Hindi masyadong stricto yung lola niya sa kanya, so hinahayaan lang siya to do whatever he wants, but just minimal supervision from her. So his parents had a quite permissive yun, attitude towards him. That's why he grew up to be how he is. And so there were two separate times that his father and grandmother showed a benign neglect towards him. The first was the incident about his father teaching him how to bike when he was young. So hinahayaan lang siya matuto mag-isa, mag to learn how to use the bike on his own 
Tapos sa grandmother naman niya is parang he brought cigarettes with him. Tapos instead ng pagalitan siya, hinayaan lang siya ng, ng lola niya na mag-smoke ng cigarettes in front of her. Like, sige, ikaw ba ala trip mo yan eh. Ganun. So to him, genetic factors have a greater impact on the subsequent behavior than do childhood experiences. So hindi siya naniniwa ako ni Freud na kung yung, yung dahil sa permissive na attitude na binigay sa akin ng magulang niya, he'll turn out to be unruly, ganun. I didn't believe in that. So, he often challenges his teachers, especially those with militaristic learning. So, parang laki siyang yung parang it's like the typical American student na if they know that something's wrong or like they ask a lot of questions, um, they're very curious. Kana that was how I sent grew up to be. All right. So at age 18, he left Germany and settled in England, where he tried to enroll in the University of London. So before he could enroll in the University of London, he was told that he was required to pass an entrance examination, in which he had to study for one year at a commercial college. So after he passed the exam, the um, plan was to take up the um, physics as a major. However, mali yung nakuha niyang subject sa entrance exam kaya hindi siya eligible to pursue physics curriculum. So rather than waiting for another year to take the right subjects, parang nang hinayang na siya, he asked if there was some scientific subject that he was qualified to pursue. Tapos nung sinabi sa kanya na, yeah, you can take psychology, sabi niya, what on earth is psychology? He never heard of psychology although he had some vague ideas about psycho analysis. Ang iniisip niya, could psychology possibly be a science? However, he had a little choice but to pursue a degree in psychology so he prompted entering the university with a major in the discipline about which he knew almost nothing about. So, years later, isa siya sa mga well-known um, psychologist na nag-develop ng factor trait theory. So, at his stay there, he married Margaret Davis, a Canadian with a degree in mathematics. However, hindi nag-work yung relationship nila kasi parang um, they were also looking for um, this travel across United States and Canada looking over for clinical psychology programs in which he found to be totally inadequate and unscientific kasi nga, di ba, wala pang basis yung behavior dati. So, parang it's more on psychoanalysis. Wala pa siyang scientific basis. So, as a person who's really parang inaaral talaga yung scientific side ng lahat ng bagay. Like, that, that's how he is dati. Um, he realized na he had to do something about it. So, yung time na to, medyo off na sila ng asawa niya. Tapos, meron siyang nakas- nakasabay sa Philadelphia traveling niya, which is Sil- Sibyl Rostal which is a beautiful, who is a beautiful quantitative psychologist. So, ayun. Hindi nag-work kasama sa, re- sa relationship niya sa first wife niya. So, he divorced um, his wife. Tapos, he married Sibyl Rostal. So, Isaac had three sons and one daughter. Yung son niya from his first wife was named Michael. Si Michael yung tumutulong sa anya sa pagsulat ng mga libro niya. Kaya, super helpful lang anak niyang to. Tapos, um, he actually died of cancer because he argued that cigarette smoking was not a major risk factor for cancer. But during his time, he was a very like a heavy smoker kasi siya until his middle age. So, parang, you know, hindi tayo naniwala na nakapatay yun dati. Pero ngayon, obviously, we all know that it's very risky. Pero at the end of it all, Isaac was perhaps the most prolific writer in the history of psychology having published some 800 journal articles or book chapters and more than 75 books. Super, ano nga talaga, super, he had this writer side of him. Tapos, he would always argue about a lot of topics. He would come up with his own ideas about a lot of things. Parang lumabas yung pagiging katulad niya nung bata, diba? Parang super curious niya sa lahat ng baga. He wants to have answers to a lot of things. So, whenever he seems to have answers, kumagawa siya, nagsusulat siya about his side of it. Ganon. So, let's start with the Isaac's Factor Theory. So, Isaac's Factor Theory has strong psychometric and biological components available in the theory. 
Okay, so now we will be tackling about the criteria for identifying factors. So the first um, criteria is the psychometric evidence for the factor's existence must be established. So para dito, kailangan yung factor reliable siya and replicable. So pwede siyang ma-replicate na ibang mga scientists or investigators from separate laboratories and ma-find nila yung factor na yon tapos consistent na ma-identify siya as extroversion, neuroticism, neuroticism, and psychoticism. Next is the second criterion, which is that the factor must also possess heritability and must fit an established genetic model. So, itong criterion to, ini-eliminate niya yung learned characteristics such as the ability, for example, to mimic um, voices sa mga tao, ganun. Tapos, third factor, kailangan it makes sense from a theoretical view then. Hindi lang siya uh, merely biological but also my theoretical view. So, I sank, um, developed or like he used the deductive method of investigation wherein he began or like he began, I'm sorry, he began with the theory and then gathering that data that are logically consistent with the theory that he began with. It's like having this theory, tapos magahanap ka ng mga supporting, um, supporting researches about your theory. So, for the final criteria naman, it must possess social relevance. So, for him, it, it must demonstrate um, it must be demonstrated that mathematically derived factors have a relationship but not um, casual like causal relationship with such socially relevant variables such as drug addiction proneness to um, unintentional injury so parang relevant siya like studying it becomes relevant because it tackles issues about drug addiction, criminality, and psychotic behavior. So those are the four criteria for identifying factors um, based on ISENC. So next, we will be tackling about the hierarchy of behavioral organization. So according to ISENC, there are a four-level hierarchy of behavioral organization. So at the lowest level, or the first level, we have the specific acts or cognitions. These are the individual behaviors or thoughts that may or may not be the characteristic of a person. So example neto is, a student finishing a reading assignment would be an example of a specific response. So ang second level naman natin is called the habitual acts or cognition. That is responses that recur under similar conditions. So for example, kanyari, um, a student um, frequently frequently um, does his assignment and like early ka nun, early ka nagagawa ng assignment mo, hindi ka nag wait for deadline it's your habit already you do that um, consequently under similar conditions as opposed to specific responses, habitual responses must be reasonably reliable or consistent so hindi consistent yung specific acts it may or may not, parang minsan mo lang siya ginagawa, may times na hindi ko siya ginagawa. Ang habitual acts naman, ginagawa mo siya under similar conditions. So, kunyari, alam mo namang finals, kunyari, finals na, habit, habitual acts mo is to study, advanced study, kunyari. So, under similar conditions na alam mo magpa-finals, mag-aaral ka during that time. So, that's your habit. Gets. So, next is the several related habitual responses form our trait. So a trait is a third level of behavior. So traits are defined as important semi-permanent personality dispositions. So for example, yung student na yun na nag-aaral, advance, ganyan, magkakaroon siya ng trait of persistence. If they habitually complete um, class assignments or go to a study advance for the finals, ganun, magkakaroon siya ng trait of persistence. Ganun. Tapos, although traits can be identified intuitively, 
trait and factor theories rely on a more systematic approach, namely the factor analysis. So trait level behaviors are extracted through factor analysis of habit level responses, just as habitual responses are mathematically extracted through factor analysis of specific responses. Tapos, tsaka lang magagawa ng significant intercorrelations between the different habitual behaviors. Next, we have the, lastly, is the types or the super factors at the fourth level, which is defined as made up of several interrelated traits. So, dito na lumalabas yung tatlo, which is extroverted ka, introverted ka, psychotic kism ka or yung super ego function yung gumagana or neurotic kism ka over stab- um, emotional stability ka na. Doon na lumalabas yung super factors or the very fourth level which is the super factors or the types. So let me give you a brief example. So as this picture depicts, so the top is P or the psychotic kism. Under the P is aggressive, cold, egocentric, impersonal impulsive these are the traits so p is the super factor and under the traits of aggressive and cold are the habits or the antisocial unempathetic creative and tough-mindedness these are the habits and so in the hierarchy structure of the extroversion and introversion we can find the traits of sociable lively active assertive and sensation seeking and under these are the traits are are the habits of carefree, dominant, surgent, and venturesome. In the hierarchy structure of neurogotism, under the superfactor of N is anxious, depressed, guilt feelings, low esteem, and tense. And under these are the habits of irrational, shy, moody, and emotional. So here are just some brief example of how the hierarchy works. Next, we shall be talking about the dimensions of personality, namely extroversion, or the other side, introversion, neuroticism, and stability, psychoticism, and superego function, which is shortly for PEN. P-E-N. Okay, so let's now start with the first one, which is extroversion and introversion. So at the left side are the extroverts and the right side or the introverts so extroverts are characterized primarily by sociability and impulsiveness but also by jocularity liveliness quick wittedness optimism and other traits on the other hand introverts are characterized by being opposites of extroverts which are quiet passive unsociable careful reserved thoughtful pessimistic peaceful sober and controlled So these are some of the differences of the extroverts and introverts and let me just be specific because in the books because of the book it is actually extraverts and not extrovert it's extrovert okay also according to isang the principal differences between the two are not behavioral but rather biological and genetic in nature Um, He also believed that the primary cause of the difference between extroverts and the introverts is one of the cortical arousal levels. So the cortical arousal level is a psychological condition that is largely inherited rather than learned. So dito na lumalabas yung pagiging, yung belief niya na we are made up of inherited gene personality from our parents Um, so extroverts have a lower level of cortical arousal than do introverts so let me be specific here lower level of cortical arousal for introverts they are characterized by a higher level of arousal and as a result of a lower sensory threshold so extroverts since they have a lower level of cortical arousal they have higher sensory thresholds and thus lesser reaction to sensory stimulation and that's the reason why extroverts have a habitually low level of cortical arousal and they need a higher level of sensory stimulation to maintain an optimal level of stimulation 
Thus, extroverts participate more often in exciting and stimulating activities. Kaya mga extroverts, they are always on the go because they have low level of cortical arousal. On the other hand, introverts have um, high levels of um, cortical arousal. Thus, they don't need anything to be stimulated. And also, that's the reason why they do not participate in stimulating or like too much stimulation. Introverts are less likely to become bored. Tapos, hindi sila mabilis uh, magsawa sa routine news na activity. Kahit pa ulit, hindi sila nagsasawa. Kasi nga, they are more on um, lower levels of stimulation. So, kahit ano, hindi sila mabilis ma-stimulate. Unlike sa extroverts na kailangan nila ng um, bigger kind of stimulation for them to be stimulated. Alright, so let's be talking about the next one which is neuroticism and stability. So we have to keep in mind that factor N has a strong hereditary component. People who score high on neuroticism, neuroticism often have a tendency to overreact emotionally and have difficulty in returning to normal state after emotional arousal. So, ayun yung parang definition of neuroticism. Like, mabilis sila mas maging emotional over small things and they have difficulty in getting them getting back to normal. So, frequently complain of physical symptoms such as headache, backache, and vague psychological problems such as worries and anxiety. Like, lahat na lang may problema sila about himself. Tapos, Isaac proposed this emotional reactivity in neuroticism. Is this because it is because of the highly reactive limbic system, including amygdala and hypothalamus? So, yun yung dahilan kung bakit super emotional ng mga neurotics. Tapos, on the other hand, stability is the opposite of it. Yung mga taong hindi sila mabilis ma- ma- move ng isang emotional or traumatic experience. Like, they are very stable. That's their personality. Pero, I think also believe na meron at meron talagang times na ang psychiatric illness suggests that some people are vulnerable to illness because they have either a genetic or an acquired weakness that predisposes them to an illness. This is the diathesis stress model, which explains that the predisposition may interact with stress to produce a neurotic behavior. So, parang ina-assume ni Isaac na lahat ng tao may like we can go through stressful situations growing up. Tapos meron pa tayong genetic weakness for it. Ay di mas lalong dumagdag yun. Kaya tayo magkakaroon or magka, may chance tayo na magkaroon ng neurotic behavior. Yun yung sinasabi ni Isaac sa diathesis stress model niya. Tapos, the higher the neurotism score, the lower the level of stress necessary to precipitate a neurotic disorder. So, ang sinasabi lang dito is kapag mas mataas, kapag mataas ka sa neuroticism mo, kahit konting stress lang na mapagdaanan mo sa buhay mo, ma-overwhelm ka na agad. That's it. Pero kapag more on stability ka, hindi ka mabilis ma-phase o ma-overwhelm sa mga ganong-ganong bagay. Stress and high level of N-score combine to elevate people's vulnerability to psychological disorders. However, we also have to keep in mind na no single syndrome can define a neurotic behavior. Okay? And for the last part of the dimension of personality, we have psychoticism, psychoticism, superego function. So, um, psychoticism or high people with P are often like, egocentric, cold, non-conforming, impulsive, hostile, aggressive, suspicious, psychopathic, and antisocial. While on the other hand, super ego function people are altruistic, empathic, caring, cooperative, conforming, and conventional. So, katulad lang siya ng neurotic. So, stress and high levels of 
n squares, so kung mag mataas yung n square mo, combined with stress, mas nagkakaroon or in-elevate na yung vulnerability mo to psychological disorders. And also, people who score high on psychoticism and who are also experiencing level of stress have an increased chance of developing a psychotic disorder. Katulad ng sinabi sa diathesis stress model, sinasuggest nito na pag mas taas yung score mo ng P, genetically more vulnerable ka sa stress than those na mas mababa yung score sa psychiatric um, test. So, high psychoticism interacts with high level of stress. People become vulnerable to psychotic behavior. Like what I said, it's just hila naman yung gusto sinab- sabihin na to eh. Like it's just a uh, repeat of it all. So, the higher the psychoticism score, the lower the level of stress necessary to precipitate a psychotic reaction. And in other words, kapag um, mataas yung psychoticism score mo, mas prone ka, mas madali kang ma-overwhelm sa mga malilit na stress lang na nangyayari sa buhay mo. So, for the next slide, it's just an example of um, a scale of being introverted, extroverted, emotional, stable, or being um, neurotic. It's just an example of the two, but it's supposed to be three. If you want to check it, it's better. Uh, there is a better illustration in the book if you want to check it, and if you want to a further explanation of how the three work together. All right, so we will now be tackling about the measuring personality test that I think developed. So the first one is the Maudsley Personality Inventory or the MPI. It assesses the E and N of the personality, which is extroversion and neuroticism only. Pero ano ganyare nagkaroon siya ng correlation between the factors, which is not supposed to be the case. So when he revised yun ni Isaac, as mo wash na bago, which it, which he called the Isaac Personality Inventory or the EPI. E dito, nagkaroon ng lie scale or L scale to detect faking kung may nagsisinungalin ba yung tao na detect nun. Pero more importantly, it measures extroversion and neuroticism independently already. Tapos, nagkaroon na naman ng junior EPI for kids um, developed by Sibyl Isink. Tapos, nagkaroon pa rin. Tapos, diba, na-develop niya yung psychoticism niya na personality dimension. That's why he created a third one, which is the ISENC personality questionnaire, which already included the psychoticism scale. Tapos, for the last one, nagkaroon na naman ng mga criticisms sa pangating yung ginawa. So, he revised it and made the ISENC personality questionnaire revised. Right. So, for the biological basis of personality, you have to remember these. Personality factors, which is the pen, have powerful biological determinants. Hindi na niniwala si, si Isaac sa mga unconscious, conscious, chenis na tinuturo ng psychodynamic theories. He believes in the biological determinants of behavior. So, three-fourths of the variance of all three personality dimensions can be accounted for heredity and environment. Okay? So, hindi siya yung iniisip lang ng tao kana it's more on na inherit natin sa genes natin yung behavior ng parents natin parang ganun plus dinagdagan pa ng environment natin so paano natin to mamemeasure like paano sinuportahan to ni Isaac so mayroon three thirds of evidence of which I did not include there already you can just read in the book um, so, researchers have found nearly identical factors among people in various parts of the world. So, I is some evidence, I think. There was also evidence suggests that individuals tend to maintain their position over time on the different dimension of personality. So, if extrovert ka, extrovert ka pa din at the end of your life. Ganon. Also, studies of twins show a higher concordance between identical twins and then of the same gender fraternal twins reared together suggesting that genetic factors play a dominant part in determining individual differences in personality. 
also we have to um, take into consideration that Isaac's theories of personality have both antecedents and consequences. So yung antecedent niya is genetic and biological. Yung consequences naman niya is experimental variables such as conditioning experiences, sensitivity, and memory as well as social behaviors affect our personality. So all in all, personality has genetic determinants that indirectly shape biological intermediaries intermediaries and these biological intermediaries help mold p e and n right so that ends my report for today and the other part of the report of isync would be further discussed by my partner and again my name is jubel somaga and i am one of the reporters of chapter 14 which is the hans jurgen isync and the biologically based trait theory that he has developed thank you and have a good day bye